Oh shit, you muted her. I do that every time when I there got the music go. going on in the background. Hey, <laughs> thank you for joining Military History Chronicles, where we're going to discuss one of the most important Cold War events uh, that ever happened in the first Cold War, because you could arguably say we're in a second Cold War right now. I have been for a few years, but uh, yeah, the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. Man, we could go a whole bunch of different ways. I'm ready to hear everything you guys got because, you know, this uh, this didn't happen in a vacuum. There was a there was a lot of uh, a lot of events that happened prior to the uh, right the Cuban Missile Crisis, and of course, there's a lot that happened afterwards. Yeah, um, a lot of conspiracy theories out there. You know, I I don't subscribe to a lot of them, but hey, I'm willing to listen and hear what everyone has to say. I'm I'm all for listening to what people have to say. You know, I mean, you never know. And they, what I've come to learn is sometimes the most far fetched idea actually holds some water. So right. You never know. Hey, what's up, Matt? Got Aaron in there, and then uh, yeah, we got Los with us tonight. Hell yeah. yeah I, I know I had to invite him. I know he said he wanted when we started talking about, you know, Kennedy, Cuban Missile Crisis, anything like that. He wanted to be part of it. So it's like, hey, we got to oh, bring him sure. on. For sure. Just, I know uh, you enjoy that. Huge era, huge time frame, you know, all the whole Soviet, you know, U.S. conflict. It was huge. That on, everything that went on behind the scenes to to find a peaceful solution as opposed to just diving Nuking in. Nuking each other. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I'm going to yeah, tell you yeah. something. And you, it was I'm, close. I'm gonna put up a timeline here. I mean, from the time that he was inaugurated until the time he was assassinated, I mean, Kennedy had to navigate quite a bit of geopolitical maneuvering there. There was there was a few times that you know it could have gone nuclear, right? And that's not hyperbole. That I mean, that's legitimate. No, and, uh, not at all. It's just and then and then on the opposite side, you had a uh, good old uh, Khrushchev. The lead, I don't know what you call them, the leader, the premier, whatever the hell they are in the Soviet Union, but who was, you know, the chairman of the Communist Party or what is it, the Presidium, the Politburo, you name it, man. They're, they had so yeah, many long. different... What was, the title? was it title? Was it premier? I, I, th I think, it, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's chairman of the Communist Party, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what the leader is. Because I know... Uh, Stalin, when he was alive during World War II, he didn't want to be known as, you know, that, that was a big thing when when uh, FDR was writing him letters. He didn't know how to acknowledge him because he wasn't a president. He, I mean, uh, comrade, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Um, real quick, uh, we got to kind of talk about this just for a couple of minutes. Uh, it looks like there's going to be a ceasefire in Israel. Supposedly yeah, going to be a four day ceasefire. To be. I think they're negotiating over the hostages right now. Supposedly, uh, all the hostages that uh, that Hamas is going to release is going to be women and children under the age of nineteen. That's going to be a fifty of them. Uh, in in return, that uh, Israel will give back to Hamas one hundred and fifty prisoners that are also I don't know if it's I don't know if it's just women, but under the same age of nineteen as well, nineteen and older or and younger. So, and supposedly uh, it's the Israelis had a caveat to that. For every 10 that they release more than the 50, that, that's going to extend it by a day or something like that, right? Something like that. But I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I've, yeah, I'm not sure how much I believe or put stock in all that crap. The, the Israelis are going to do what the Israelis are going to do, period. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't think this is going to prevent Israel from continuing to dismantle no, Hamas. Not it's not going to do that. But no. will Hamas break it? Between that time, for it's highly possible they break more it. More than likely. So, just wanted to get into that a little bit. You know, U.S. Oh. history, guys, was always one of my absolute favorite classes in high school. Oh yeah. Like you know, when you're in school, and you know you're thinking about girls and dances and playing sports and doing things outside of school, there were certain classes that just really kept you engaged. Right. Absolutely. That 45 minutes for an hour or whatever it was, and U.S. history world history, anything was always big for me. Oh yeah. It's funny. And it, you know, what makes a big issue or it makes it so. Yeah. What, I know what you gave me. But what, what I was going to, what I was going to say is that I had to like, remember in, in the movie 13 days came out and it was about <laughs> the Cuban crisis. 
Yeah. And I saw it and like I I, I was just so fixated on that movie because it was just so reality and, you know, on the screen as opposed to in, in a book or studying it to see it play out and to see all the tension that was involved with it, not just on the U.S. side, but on their side as well. You know, Cuba involved yep. in it, the whole world, like waiting to see what these two superpowers, you know, were going to be able to have to decide. Um, you know, Cuba was a pawn, you know, kind of. It was. The time. Astro Honestly. Was, Absolutely. Astro yep. was pissed because like, like he was really upset at Khrushchev afterwards because like you didn't even consult with me about Exactly. Yeah. Right. Honestly, Fidel was zero. In this entire episode, didn't matter at all. Didn't matter Zero. at all, man. But uh, but going back to what you're talking about, the history, it also depends on the teacher that you have. If you have a right. good teacher who actually yeah. engages, if it, if they're just being monotone and just like I'm telling you, that will just destroy someone's, sure. you know, enjoyment, if you will, uh, about a certain subject. I'll tell you. Oh, what, there you um, go. I mean, Mark just talked about it right here. Yeah. He goes, my teachers yeah. made history boring. Yeah. See. Yeah. I tell you what, I remember going through college, like, hey, this would be cool to have a major in. But, you know, unfortunately, everybody preaches, hey, you got to go down a certain path. You got to get the business degree, right? Or it'll be worth the craft or something like that. Yeah, that's that's one thing I liked about my my major in military, with history, with a, with a uh, concentration in military history. I was able to get a whole bunch. Like, this was a part of this that we're talking about. We had to talk about in in uh, in my college class. It was the U.S. and the Cold War. So, imagine, yeah. I mean, that was going to be a huge factor. Yeah, that's cool. But real quick, okay, let me get you guys this real quick before I go into the timeline. Uh, what do you think led to this uh, Cuban Missile Crisis that happened? I'll go, go ahead, Will. You started off real quick. I think the CIA was going was making their power play. I think it was uh, mostly. I think on both sides, I think the CIA and KGB had a great influence on how things were happening there. Um, in contrast to their leaders, I mean, for me, the CIA was kind of warmongering. It, okay. Prior, prior to prior to the Cuban Missile Crisis, we had the Bay of Pigs. The CIA mm -hmm. wanted to the CIA wanted to own Cuba. They wanted to invade. They wanted to take over everything, and they wanted to do it again. I think at that point, you know, they were kind of at that point and during the Cuban Missile Crisis, you could see kind of power moves being played out during the whole uh, whole thing there with with JFK wrestling power away, you know, trying to trying to keep the wolves at bay, you well, trying to decipher what is truth from reality, you know, truth from from the BS, and I think Khrushchev was having the same boat, just in the same boat too with the KGB. So for me, I think the, I think the CIA was like a major proponent of this whole thing. So you and, think there was some secret scrolls going off, some conniving well, line? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, it okay. gets into more like a conspiratorial kind of thing, but that's kind of that's fine. Yeah. Interesting. How about you, Lowe's? Well, I think from Russell's point of view, I think they were kind of looking at the U.S. You know, kind of miracles like. You got missiles in Turkey and in Italy. Right. It's pretty close to us, and we just want to even the, balance the the playing field here and have some missiles, you know, a little bit close to you. So you're telling us we can't have missiles there, but you can have missiles here. Lo and you know what? Go. Los gets the cookie, man. Exactly. Holy crap, he knows it. Good. We'll we'll, we'll Good. get into later about what happened, you know, in the aftermath about the uh, missiles. But I think a kind of a sleeper was, I think at the time, if I remember correctly, that. You know, Cuba was maybe distancing themselves a little bit from Russia and kind of getting in cahoots with China. And I think, you know, Ooh, that there, that's was a a good... little, there was a little bit of thing where maybe Cuba mm. felt like it needed to protect itself or Russia felt it needed to protect itself. And that's why they put the missiles over there. Um, so that's kind of like the backstory was China and, and Cuba were kind of getting a little bit. You know what? Each other. I need to look some of that stuff up because that's a great point, because, you know, during that time. In the 60s, early 60s, China and the Soviet Union damn near came to a war. Right, yeah. They right. did not like each other. Right. I mean, even though they're communist countries, they did not like each other. Right. So, yeah, very good. And it's, and it's, it's a different different look at communism, too, on both sides. Different yeah, way it is. It is. And fast forwarded to 70 years where we are now and, and now look at China. <laughs> no. and Russia. I mean, it's just yeah. amazing. I mean, you know, Japan used to be our, our enemy. And, you know, I mean, just it's, it's amazing how things just kind of come around. Yep. Um, uh, unlike sports, countries can patch things up. The Raiders and the 49ers will never, ever, ever be <laughs> friends, so to speak. But right. countries... And and you know going through wars and killing each other can be forgiven decades later if if you can get along 
you know, policy wise and, and come to some kind of an agreement. But yeah, I think that's what kind of led up to it. And then, you know, we know what happened with the Bay of Pigs um, that kind of like uh, fed it as well. But um, it was real. Those 13 days were. And that ooh. was based on, uh, I guess, Robert Kennedy's book, right? 13 days. Yeah. That was the yeah. title was a memoir. But uh, real if quick. Uh, the, if you haven't seen the movie. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to have to watch that. It, it's a good one. Is it's that the one with Kevin Costner? Yep. He's in there. I'm going to have to take again. Who did he play in that? Was he a. He was like um, the advisor. Uh, yeah, he's part uh, of Kennedy's, um, Kennedy's main advisor. I Was he the, uh, was he an advisor for the National Security Advice? Or National Security Advice? Okay, I know who that is. In. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's part of that. A couple of these things. Um, but yeah, Lewis breaks up a good point talking about nuclear missiles. Now, in the height of the Cold War, you know, um, the, as a matter of fact, this happened. I'm going to bring it up here in a short, short bit. The United States wanted to position some of these nuclear missiles within NATO countries. None of the NATO countries wanted them except for, as Lois pointed out, Turkey, Turkey and Italy. Uh, and I'm not quite sure on Italy's, the reason why Italy wanted it, but there is a reason why Turkey wanted it. They wanted it to be looked upon as, hey, you know what? Hey, we're, we're big men on the block here. You know, we're in association with the, with the United States. We got nuclear missiles. Now, there's a caveat to that. Even though they had, even though they had missiles there, uh, Turkey was in charge of the missile, but we were in charge of the warheads. So, and there, there is no way that it would be possible for, uh, to Turkey to be, they can't go rogue, so to speak, and just be able to lock, launch a missile. Um, here, let me get into this timeline real quick and then we, we can get into maybe bring up some maps to, uh, boop, 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 boop. share this and then I'll expand it. All right. Did it expand full screen? Yep. All right, cool. So here we go. Let's start with this. In June, actually, it wasn't June. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's go back here. 1958, 1959. It ne I should remove, remove placement because it was actually the decision was made during the Eisenhower administration that we were going to place Jupiter missiles in Italy and Turkey. These were in, uh, intermediate arranged uh, ballistic missiles that could carry warheads. And uh, we'll bring up a map here in a bit, and you can see exactly where these would not exactly, but you can see the uh, the geography of where these were in uh, relation to where the Soviet Union is. So in 1958, 1959, were deployed to Italy and Turkey as a forward strike capability. 30 missiles were going to go to Italy, 15 to Turkey. An additional 15 missiles were scheduled for deployment to Turkey, but these plans were later canceled. <laughs> okay, we're just going to follow the timeline real quick, and then we'll get into more stuff here. Then in April... 1961, God, this is what, only a few months after Kennedy was inaugurated, he got the Bay of Pigs. Yeah. Botched U.S. planned invasion of Cuba to overthrow Fidel Castro involved approximately 1,500 exiled Cubans who were opposed to the rule of Castro. The plan began under, under the Eisenhower administration and implemented under the Kennedy administration. We'll get, we're going to get more into this, uh, you know, the more we talk about this. Then not that far away from August, or from April, you got August and the summer of 1961, you got the Berlin Wall. Okay. Um, and actually the Berlin Wall happened. I got to get into this first. Is the Berlin Wall happened after this summit. This is a key summit between President Kennedy and Khrushchev, which discussed issues uh, occurring in Berlin. President Kennedy wanted to discuss other issues, but it was the Berlin issue that was at the front and center. That was because of Khrushchev. Right. Both of the summit did not resolve the tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union. And then, of course, this led to uh, in the fall and the winter of the Cuban Missile Crisis. There was another crisis Kennedy had to go through that I'm not too well versed on, but it had to do with I think Laos. Laos. Yeah. There were things happening in Laos. As a matter of fact, Khrushchev also went during that Vienna summit in uh, 1961. He wanted to talk to Kennedy about what was going on in Laos, and. Uh, um, President de Gaulle uh, of France, he even said, you know, you don't want to get into this whole Laos thing. Yeah, they're getting their asses kicked. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to deal with that because honestly, that kind of precipitated to what occurred later on, which was exactly. the Vietnam War. Right. But uh, you know, we're, we're always talking, guys, about um, life, sports, whatever. Like, what if this happened? Then this would be the result. Right, a lot of what ifs in sports. It's a very tiny little microcosm. Oh my god, if this guy caught that, they'd won the Super Bowl. Okay, yeah, great, big deal. In the context of like life, what if Nixon 
was elected and not Kennedy. And mm. Nixon, with his way of thinking, would have had to deal with the same crisis, and especially the Soviet missile crisis. Do you think he would have been as patient as Kennedy was to kind of let things kind of play out? And, and you know what? And find that's something the, to do behind the scenes, or would he just have listened to the Joint Chiefs of Staff and said, "F them, man, we're 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 going in <laughs> after Cuba right now." And now, then what would have happened? I'm gonna get into this real quick here. Let's uh, let me share this real quick. Uh, I, I pulled a different thing. I mean, you could find so much literature on this, but I yeah. was just looking a whole wow. bunch of different things of what we can uh, what we can uh, glean, but. Uh, this is the, this article is talking about when uh, Khrushchev had the idea of wanting to put missiles in Cuba, and you got that says uh, Sergo Mokoyan, which is the son of the Soviet president. See, the president wasn't the leader, right? He's the first deputy <clears throat> prime minister, and that's Mikoyan. Mokoyan. Uh, it says that uh, drawing on his father's unpublished memoirs of the event. The reports that Khrushchev first raised the question of deploying missiles in Cuba with his father alone, and then with a select group of Soviet leaders in late April or early May of 1962. Fyodor Berlotsky, an aide to Khrushchev and also a participant in a Harvard conference on another occasion, stated the idea credited to Khrushchev in April and May when he was vacationing in the Crimea. After he spoke there with Marshal Rodian Malavinsky, the defense minister, Malinovsky, Malav, I can't even say it, Malinovsky pointed toward the Black Sea and commented on the emplacement of American medium range missiles in Turkey just across the sea. While um, Malanskovy, I can't even say, I'm, I'm not going to even try. Malinovsky, Malinovsky may have suggested that the Soviet Union could do the same in Cuba. It is far more likely that the idea came then or later to Khrushchev. So that kind of gives you an idea of, you know, what was going on as far as uh, as Khrushchev's thinking. But you also right. got to go back a little bit further, back to that Vienna conference. Uh, in that Vienna conference, Khrushchev pushed Kennedy around. Big time, big time. It, tried, I mean, it yeah. was, he, it he was. Try to intimidate him because he was young and he was. Yeah, absolutely. President. And he was put where he, where he was pushing him on was the issue with West Berlin. Supposedly, well, I guess I shouldn't say supposedly. Khrushchev wanted to make a safe, uh, separate treaty with East Germany, which then would put Berlin as part of. East Germany, including West Berlin, which wasn't part of uh, whether it's East German or, or Soviet control. And it would restrict access from anyone entering or leaving West Berlin. <laughs> so that was a big... In other words, Khrushchev was almost willing to go to war because of West Berlin. Now, the mm -hmm. reason why I go to war is because you... West Ber okay, Berlin. Let's go back to world at the end of World War uh, World War II. It was it was split up in a whole bunch of different. You had the Western section, which consisted of the Americans, the British, and the French, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And then you had the Eastern part, which was you know belonged to uh, the Soviet Union. Now the way they came to that agreement is because to the victor goes spoils. Right. right? We first. defeated Germany, so you get this part of Berlin. You get the even though because. At that time, when the Soviet Union were was marching across Europe, you know, defeating Germany, they weren't going to they they weren't going to cede any of the land that they conquered. That's not what that's not what Russian or Soviet leaders do. Once they've taken over the land, it's theirs, whether it's you know directly theirs or whether it's under the influence of them. So, Berlin was our that's our not I want to say territory, but by contractual, you know, uh, issues, I guess, if you was like, that's ours, just like it's to the British and to the French. And then, you know, so you can't sit there and arbitrarily say, Hey, you know what? U S now you don't have that access to West Berlin anymore, because then how is that going to look like to the United States? If you can't even hold on to West Berlin from the Russians, how are you going to have a coalition among NATO to support you? It's going to show that, you know, America's weak. But uh, yeah, Khrushchev and, kept pushing on him. 
you know, a president having a strong cabinet is so yes. not talked about. And and in Kennedy, I mean, he had some he had some dogs in there. McNamara being obviously oh, the yeah. dog being the the, uh, the, the whiz kids secretary of defense. I mean, McNamara was no joke, man. Um, he had a bunch of advice. You know, he had Bobby. It's funny because like they're brothers, but it, I always kind of struck Bobby to be like the more aggressive one, the more yeah, aggressive. yeah, yeah. Like, he was like, the dirty like, work guy, like the fiery guy. Like yeah, you, you push me, I'm gonna push you back. John was more methodical, more right. like you know he would think about things. Um, he quoted a quote uh, in in the movie. I can't remember, but he read a book about rules of engagement. How it just takes like the the way the Joint Chiefs does that thing is like okay, you do this. And that means I do that, and I do that, and I do that, and it's like just automatic, and then we just die. And he goes, one little thing, and that's why I found it really interesting the way the movie played out. Again, you know, you know how movies are, how much of it is real, how much of it is fiction. But the whole thing about when they were shooting at that one pilot, and he came back and says, Please don't tell the joint seats or socks you were shot at, tell them they were yeah, strikes. Yeah. Because if if you say you were shot at, it's going to force us to have to do something we're gonna get so, into uh, that too that was, that end, because there is repercussions the of engagement that's just a military type of thing um, and th those rules of engagement were tweaked after yeah. the cuban missile crisis for that very reason because both we were basically both sides were practicing brinkmanship and everyone understand brinkmanship it's basically you do anything wrong we're just gonna nuke you and, and yeah. th th that's kind of basically what it's come down to. And it's, it's, it's scary because at that point in time, both sides, even though we had to be on, don't believe what, you know, what other people may say. It was during the time of the cold war. It was always said the Soviet union have more missiles. The Soviet union has more of this. Well, that wasn't true. We actually had a monopoly on the amount of nuclear weapons at our disposal it was only until I think even I think it was like the 1980s at that point, then the Soviet Union were, I think, even on parity with how many mm -hmm. nuclear weapons that they had. So but they had to say that so that, you know, money could still be funneled into <laughs> making sure that we had exactly. more than enough. To nuke and the and nuclear weapons is the ultimate checkmate. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the ultimate checkmate. Like, we're done here. You get the bigger um, stick, you win, man. Yeah, the funny thing is. Exactly. In a way, though, if you think about this, I mean, it's kind of weird. But having that threat, it made the world, to an extent, a little bit more safe. Because everyone was afraid to cross that line. Right, yeah. You've got nuclear weapons, and you may use them. So I got to be careful on where I tread. Because if, I, if I'm not, I'm get, you know, we're going to get nuked. Now, once well, the Soviet yeah, Union fell. Accountability, you have a, you have a it, sense of fear. Now, and think twice about doing something because the repercussions that are coming after it are, you know, I can pick on this guy that's 165 pounds, but I'm going to go start shit with Mike Tyson in his prime. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking twice about that. So, you know, yeah, fear is a powerful, powerful. It absolutely thing. is. That's and that point. fear, but on the same token, like I said, it's, it, yeah, mutually shoot destruction. Exactly. It was, every target was like uh, targeted triple overkill. I mean, it was just. Because you knock down one and another one's coming in right behind it, another one behind that. So it was just you're, everybody was going to be glowing in the dark after that happened. Those no ballistic missiles that were in Cuba, I believe you guys can probably answer this better than I can. Um, they could reach just about every point in the U.S. Yes, they could. Or yeah. Their main coast. yeah, they had and the SS4s as well. and SS5s, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they had they had to put they had the potential to hit everywhere in uh the united states not all over north america but all everywhere in the united states yep and and from things that i read as well fidel was ready to use them uh once they were operational uh once russia pissed him off he was like you know before they become unoperational by the way you didn't include me in those meetings <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna set off one or two and see exactly what happens. yeah they could have to put them uh, in check so you got to think about the timeline. Like I said, this didn't happen in a vacuum. You had the, now it's funny because like I said, that plan was implemented in 1958, 1959. They weren't put in place until 1961. Right. That's that. It was under the Kennedy administration where they followed through with the plan by actually 
installing those missiles. So you got you got that you got those like you said they're right there in the backyard of the Soviet Union. I'll here I'll bring up a map real quick. I mean it's how long were those, how long were those missiles in Turkey and and Italy for? I think you're only there for a couple of years because after the and this is one of the things that happened. One of the bargaining chips that Kennedy had to use was secretly. To, to secretly <laughs> remove those missiles, like to give assurances to the Soviet Union that we'll get rid of those missiles. But he couldn't say that publicly, uh, publicly yeah. because it would look like you're weak on the Soviet Union. That, that's funny because Khrushchev got out of office two years later because of that very thing. We have a yep. negotiation between two superpowers. One of the superpowers says, okay, I'm taking the missiles out. Don't hurt me. And the other one can't admit it, even though they're doing it. They have to do it secretly. Like, I mean, in, in an age right now where news leaks all over the place yep. it's amazing that in 1962 that somebody in russia didn't say hey screw them i don't care if it is a secret they go to the newspaper it goes yeah the u.s is removing missiles in italy and turkey they just don't want the world to know about it it's amazing yep. that nobody broke that story yeah. and leaked that information that was actually happening because then it's the u.s would have been pissed they didn't want to look like you said eric they don't yep. want to look weak exactly I mean, that's what it was it's like and, Russia can look weak, but we can't. The, and you gotta, you gotta remember. Can you? And I don't think that could have happened in today's media, just for the simple fact with social no, media. Oh no, no, there, there's so much information. I mean, it's information overload to an extent. Yeah, and there's no there, way I don't think they could have got away with it. They would have to TikTok come up. right there from the political yeah. doing their thing, you know. <laughs> but yeah, as you could see, where Turkey is, supposedly it's, Bobby Kennedy is the one that came up with that stipulation. We you we are going to take our missiles out. It was a backdoor channel, mm -hmm. but you, we're not going to ever admit it in public. So it, it's done, you know, secretly. But that ultimately, that's what Russia wanted. They wanted those missiles out of Italy and, and Turkey. In that's what it came for, down to, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's that, all it came down. And <clears throat> and here's Turkey and Crimea. That's where he was vacationing up here in Crimea, which is being attacked by Russia. Well, it's been invaded by Russia since 2014. But yeah, there's stuff going on there right now. But yeah, just across the Black Sea, you know, back here, all this, Ukraine, Georgia, not necessarily Armenia, but Azerbaijan, this is all Soviet Union. Oh, <laughs> so you, huge. so we the had 15. The land that it has is, is huge. Oh, it's a massive. Look, this is only, this is only part of a year. Oh, you got yeah. all the stands over here. All the stands are part of the yeah, Soviet Union. Yep. Um, and then Italy, of course, they had 30 of those missiles here, which is not a little bit further. But Turkey, it's right there. It's just over the Black Sea, and you're getting you're getting nuked. So he didn't like that. And the so, way Khrushchev, Khrushchev was, and that's something you know that could also be looked at too. The guy was he was a bully, but he his his bark was worse than his bite. Yes. He wanted that's just to, the, yes. yeah, he wanted to negotiate. He did not want it to escalate to the point right. that he did. But exactly. Like, like for me, like I, I think possibly that might be the crowning moment of Kennedy's short, you know, career. Yep. Um, that this crisis, because he was under a lot of pressure to engage those Joint Chiefs of Staffs. Were really, yeah, and, they, they and, wanted them. Yeah, they 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 wanted. They they called him weak. They called him, you know, a, a Catholic, an Irishman. I mean, they threw everything uh, that they could at him, and were trying to push him into a corner where he had no choice but to do that and he held his ground and the stress that he must have him and everybody in that uh, council must have been under just on the brink of like a lot of people were going to die if it had gone the other way a lot exactly here we so, go here's here's another excellent article that i found uh as well talking about this and this is called uh the cuban missile crisis trading to jupiters in turkey and just to lead it off, it says President uh, President Kennedy was has been variously praised and blamed for his handling of the Cuban Missile Crisis in October of 1962. For most, it was his great triumph: seven days of wide-ranging deliberations and careful planning, and six days of the shrewd use of cautious threats, limited force, and wise diplomacy to achieve victory. For critics, however, it was an unnecessary crisis, or dangerously mishandled, or both. Kennedy should have either acceded to the Soviet missiles in Cuba or at least tried private diplomacy before moving to the quarantine. The quarantine being the uh, the naval blockade. Right. Removal of the missiles was not worth the risk of nuclear war. 
But he didn't know the missiles were there until that uh, that um, that what was it? A U a plane went over and, and just took pictures of it, and then oh, the U two, yeah, U two, yeah. yeah. He had he had no choice but then to react. So had to. That, that's pretty harsh <laughs> for it. Exactly. To be for that it's like oh my god, wow. Here it is on the basis that it hints in Robert Kennedy's memoir. That's the thirteen days that the president actually struck a private bargain and in hence indirectly acceded to the Soviet terms. See, looked weak. Critics, on the other hand, have either denied or that there was such an agreement or have stressed that it was dangerously loose. It required that the premier, Nikita Khrushchev, trust Kennedy's hedged private promise and accept public defeat in order to avoid an American invasion of Cuba or possibly all-out war. Why, the critics asked, did Kennedy refuse to accept the Turkey-Cuba trade publicly and thus leave Khrushchev a choice between possible Holocaust or humiliation. Mm. Was not Kennedy guilty of brinksmanship? What would Kennedy have done if Khrushchev had not retreated and accepted public humiliation? Now, this was written in 1980, so I don't know if it says new evidence recently de declassified minutes. I don't know if any more has been released ever since. They could be. Well, but, let, uh, let's, let's, let's talk about that real quick. What, what if Russia didn't back down? Yeah. Do you think? Do you think he would have eventually evaded Cuba within the? Well, the, the, they were ready to start bombing. I know there yeah. might have been an air campaign. There was going to be an airstrike. I think so. If I'm not mistaken, they were, were ready to do. If there was an airstrike, then all hell would have broke loose. There was a lot of there was a lot of equipment being <laughs> being positioned to be able to do that that yep. very thing. They already drew plans and everything. Yep. Curtis Lemay was the general, Joint Chiefs of Staff. <laughs> Mm. He was a tough sob too, dude. You know who he was, Pretty right? No prisoners, man. He did the street. I'm gonna oh, tell you what, Lemay, Lemay, he 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 was responsible. Well, one of the reasons he was responsible for the strategic bombing campaign in Europe, he was responsible for the fire bombing in Tokyo, and he was part of the dropping of a nuclear bomb on Japan. So the yeah. guy, he, the guy had a long resume. Yeah. Very yes. You ever see pictures of him? He always had a big stogie in his mouth. I mean, the dude was the guy was yeah. no joke. Can you imagine his resume just like drop bomb on Tokyo? You know, did the yep. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and that was that was his only solution. That he was kind of I mean, I mean he was he was tough and that's what you needed, but at the same time, mm. a, a guy like that could never be president because it's just he had one way of, yep. of solving right, yeah. for and that was the blood that was it. And, and that's that's one of the things, I mean, me personally, that that I admired about Kennedy of like he he looked for all kinds of differences. He he definitely was a uh he understood politics and real and and how to not necessarily negotiate, but how to uh to navigate these type of issues for sure. Absolutely. And, here's here's and this was after, like you said, he got intimidated. Uh yep, by this is Jeff after earlier. And, and he, you know, he could have, he could have been a petty guy. And you know, held a grudge and had and a firmer I, hand. This yep. Personal, this personal disrespect that you gave me a few months ago in Vienna, like I'm going to use my military power to screw you in your country. And he, you know, he, you know, probably put that aside and just did what was actually, you know, best for the country and the citizens to try to find another way to to keep it from happening. And he exactly. did exactly. So, so and this yeah, is another. I mean, he could be. Uh, that's a little petty to be critical on that. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You gotta because you have to kind of understand your adversary too. Because Khrushchev yeah. has always been a boisterous guy who's gonna likes to you know he took off a shoe at the union the UN and all that stuff. So yeah. At the end of the day, we're also a little bit lucky, um, like you mentioned earlier. Um, if there had been another Soviet leader that was more like Lemay uh, and more tough-minded, and you know not all not all uh, uh, bark and less spike. Then there might have he might have forced Kennedy's hand. And so exactly. Khrushchev, we 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 want to hear as as American citizens like give Kennedy love, deservingly so. But Khrushchev deserves love too, realistically, of also negotiating and, and compromising to that. And he ended up looking to be the bad one because his his uh, um, removal of the missiles was done publicly while you know the United States was done secretly. Secretly, exactly. Yeah. I wonder when it eventually came out that they did that. You know, this was 1962. So I wonder how many years later did they say, oh, shit, you removed missiles in Italy and Turkey. Exactly. Five years? Was it 10 years? I mean, I don't know. 
and something to think about. Senior brings up a good point. This is something that happened. We could get we'll get more into this too during the actual blockade. The yeah, the, the Soviets actually gave permission for their forces to take action if they're if they were attacked. And they were that uh, Vasily uh Arkhipov. Well, that's interesting. He said, Hell no, am I doing that? Yep, I've read about some of that stuff. I, I couldn't find the book. So who was? I talked about it. Pov was he? It was. He was a. If I'm not mistaken, he was a uh, Russian general. Nope, you're you're a little bit choppy there, Lois. You're frozen up a little bit, but we'll get into it when you get back here. Um. But as you notice here in 1957, uh, we're talking about why. Uh, we kind of talked about this earlier. Why did why were the Jupiters put on in Turkey? And a lot of it was because of what happened. You guys remember what happened to Suez Canal? That was a debacle for Europe. Where they tried to where they were, I think was it Egypt the shot decided to nationalize the Suez Canal and then the yeah. French and the and the British went in to say, Oh, hell no, and they looked like a bunch of fools because they came to ask us for help. And Eisenhower said, Nope, we ain't. <laughs> This has nothing to do with what we want to deal with. So it's on your own. So with that incident behind them, they didn't want to look weak in Europe. So to strengthen that NATO militarily, they wanted to decide, okay, hey, how about we put some nukes over here in, in, in Europe? But unfortunately, as it says right here, most NATO allies fearful of antagonizing the Soviet Union and in many cases of inflaming domestic opposition refused weapons only Italy and Turkey accepted him. It is well, amazing. That- it, it is amazing, guys, what a what a president, any leader of any country, has to deal with, as far as like what the previous administration did. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's like you're forced to have to deal with. Of bad stuff, then you have a lot of things to fit. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing. And what's crazy is you see how all the time I keep saying this that the the, the Cuban Missile Crisis didn't happen in a vacuum. We have all these little things that are happening. Yeah, that, that culminates exactly. So it's not just one thing that happens and boom. Right. Next thing you know, you know we got you know we got nukes in Cuba and all this other stuff. There's a whole bunch of other things going on. Um, kind of back to. Uh, also, we're kind, of, we're kind of going back and forth on this, but uh, let me bring this one up. It's going to be the, uh, is it this this one right here? This is when they were getting ready to have that uh, that summit with uh, Khrushchev in, in 61, early 61. It says, in Paris, on his way to Vienna, Kennedy met with French President Charles de Gaulle, who had two pieces of advice with respect to the summit. The first concerned Laos, or Laos, or however you want to say it. Laos, yeah. He suggested yeah. that the United States refrain from military intervention there, just as it should in Vietnam. So De Gaulle kind of knew what he was talking about. For the first, well, <laughs> first-hand experience because the French were getting their asses kicked. Oh God! <laughs> As a matter of fact, oh, one of my if you did you notice in my uh, uh, in the community what to vote for the fall of Dinh Binh Phu? That yeah. was the French. Getting their Massacre. asses kicked by the uh, by the Vietnamese in 1954, and they needed help, but they they wanted us to go go nuke them. They want <laughs> they the France wanted the U.S. to go nuke them, and some of the advisors to Eisenhower actually said, "Yeah, let's go let's go nuke them. Let's test these things out, and see how they work." But uh, so France had a very keen understanding: don't get involved in Laos and don't get involved in Vietnam. Uh, second Boys, I'll recommendation. Right. Boys, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Sure. Good. The second recommendation had to do with Berlin. It says the West must not retreat before Soviet dictation. If Khrushchev actually followed through on his threats to sign a separate peace treaty with East Germans, then this would mean war. If he wants war, we must make it clear to him that we can have war. But one should not take Khrushchev's war monitoring too seriously. The general went on dryly since he had been spouting ultimatums for the past two and a half years without ever mustering the courage to unleash war. So there you go. I mean, he was getting very sound advice from from the French. So, you know, you a lot of times you hear, you know, oh, France, blah, blah, blah. But in, in this situation, 
they absolutely had a uh, a valuable thing to pass on right. to and Kennedy that, before. And that continued on into, into 1963 where he didn't want to get involved further in Vietnam. Yeah, but the thing is, he did send, he was he did send secretly, troops. secretly, he sent, he was one of the first to send a, a, a pretty significant amount of service personnel in to uh, Vietnam. The CIA was already on the ground over there too, years yeah. prior. Well, you had um, the Eisenhower, they were, they had people, but it wasn't, it wasn't the same footprint that Kennedy, Kennedy started really throwing some, he was throwing in thousands of uh, men into Vietnam. Secretly, of course, the Soviet or the American public had no idea. Mm. Yeah, Russian sub was hit by a depth charge from the U.S. We were trying to get the sub to surface, but they mistaked it for an attack. The sub had to have three people sign off the launch, and a new two of the three said, "Yeah, but then, oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, because if they launched, it would have been all over, man." We would not Sign be sitting here today. I would have even, I, we wouldn't even been born, man. We wouldn't have been born. Not. not at all. Okay, let's 1960, see. Oh. 1962. Yeah, that was five years before I was born. See, we would all not we would all not even known each other. We would have said, you know, what the hell is this balance the smoke crap? Balance the smoke. <laughs> yeah, here's your balance of smoke. Here's a bunch of nukes. <laughs> oh Sneaky man. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to what you and everybody in the chat that knows their history, kind of getting back to the point I made earlier, what do you think happens if Nixon's the president? You know what? I don't know. Because Nixon, he was a shrewd uh, foreign policy guy because he opened up China. He, he's he got us out of Vietnam. You know, he's obviously known for the scandal and everything that went down with that. Yeah. But he was actually a very, very smart guy. No, and you know what's funny, man? You think about this. For what he resigned for, that's normal everyday practice today. <laughs> exactly. They get away with murder these days. That's nothing, man. That is absolutely nothing compared to the type of politics <laughs> that's happened today. It's just it's ridiculous. <laughs> what? Because he was spying on his opposition? Oh, my God. That's like everybody does that now. It's like it's – and it's not even kept secret. Everyone knows it. It's just it's a, crazy. you got a politician laundering money through Ukraine and getting paid on the side and all that. That's cool. Uh, let me, <laughs> here we go. Oh, yeah. This is uh, talking about the outcome. The summit did not come close to meeting American expectations. Kennedy left Vienna entirely shocked by Khrushchev. The young president's charm simply ricocheted off the shrewd tactician from the Kremlin. Khrushchev, in contrast, was pleased with the strategy of his brusque co confrontation. He felt like the victor and saw the discussion as an agreeable preview for future negotiations. Russians yeah, are good for that. Nego I'm telling you, the Russians, when you negotiate with them, they are hard nosed. They don't give an inch, and it's it's very monotonous, and it takes an extremely amount of time to get anything done. Uh, he adhered to the well, schedule. There was that he one scene. There were... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish it. Okay. He said uh, he adhered to the schedule he had laid out uh, for Ulbricht. Ulbricht was uh, the leader, the East German leader. At the, you know, uh, he, of course, under the uh, under the uh, watchful eye of the Soviet Union, planning to hold off in a decisive confrontation with Western powers until after the 22nd Party Congress. This is when he's talking about having elections uh, or signing a treaty with the East Germans in December. Let's see. It says, only gradually did Khrushchev recognize that the injuries he had inflicted on Kennedy through his gruff behavior actually strengthened Kennedy's will to resist. Khrushchev's goal would be harder to attain than he had previously thought. Considering the Soviet military weakness in the area of global strategy, it could be expected that this would reign in the United States. To remedy the situation, he called a meeting with the heads of the Soviet nuclear program in July of 1961, in order to prepare a launch of a 100 megaton explosive device at the end of October. This was in time to co coincide. This is something that they always did. The Russians, they would always do some type of act to make it to make themselves look threatening. So, oh, it, 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 was, a way, it was a way to try to elicit the right response, if you will. Right. Oh, the right response, in, in, on their case, for how the U.S. is going to react. It was a bargaining chip. They always did that. 
it's it they were bullies now like i said you could you could say this with a lot of the leaders with the soviet union there was a lot of bark but not a whole lot of bite but it's just it was maddening i couldn't imagine what it must have been like for some of these negotiators trying to talk with the soviet union during the heyday of the cold war i mean goodness gracious it probably not until you know when the when the Soviet Union started collapsing, that could you, you know, get any kind of <laughs> reasonable dialogue with them, man. Uh, let's see. Okay. This is where they're talking about a scientist. He tried to get involved in basically Khrushchev told him to shut up, let us do our thing. We're not going to listen to scientists. Uh, what was it? Mm-hmm. Refu- yep. Okay. Now, if you think about it, what happened at the same time as this, got to, I had that all out of order. After the Vienna, uh, that's when the Berlin Wall went up shortly after the Vienna because they wanted to stop because there was a lot of East Germans who were coming into West Germany to work. But at the same time, a lot of them were fleeing the East. Who wants to, who wants to stay in damn East Germany <laughs> when you could go? <laughs> have it made in the West. And if you stayed in West Berlin and then from West Berlin, they could, you know, go throughout, you know, free Europe, if you will. What was so Germany's, what, Berlin what was, what was the rest of Europe's position? I'm curious about this whole missile crisis as it went on. That you, you know, know, that's a good what, question. During the actual what crisis. Was position, what was Germany's position? Um, well, you know what? They talked about this. Where did I see this at? Let me find the right one. Was it here? Actually, I think it was in this one that I got up. Because, I mean, you, you read a lot of things and it, it just seems like, <clears throat> you know, I don't know if the United Nations were, were I'm, I assume they were, were meeting at the time and everybody had, each representative had their own opinion of this and that. But when you read about this, all you just read about is just U.S., Russia, and very little, you know, Cuba involved in it. You don't. Hear yeah, you don't hear you very don't hear much anything about what what China thought, what Japan thought, what Germany thought, what some of the other powers, you know, think thought about, you know, taking mm-hmm. one side or the other, or you know, just voicing their opinions. I, I, I maybe I'm wrong. I missed it, but I don't think I heard too many. Um, uh, inklings or word about what other countries were thinking at the time. So Real quick, quick is it Mc... if anybody in the chat knows, please. Did uh, Costner play McGeorge Bundy? Uh, is that who he played, <laughs> McGeorge Bundy? I think so. Okay, yeah, because he was the national security advisor to uh, President Kennedy. I'm trying to find. I saw this in here where they were talking about uh, some of Europe's. Gosh, where did I see that at? I saw it somewhere in here. I got to find it. Because they were talking about um, Adenir, Adenir, Adenir. He was the West German guy. You had Macmillan, who was uh, the the prime minister of England. And then, of course, uh, De Gaulle in, in France. So when Senior brings up this, the, the, the Russian sub was very close to um, Armageddon, yeah, yeah, was was in the movie. There was a scene where they were just sending warning shots over them to like stop. Yeah, do right. yeah. you think that was the sub that maybe the Soviets yeah. interpreted that as an attack? As a correct, to yeah, I shot? could see that happening. I could see yeah. that happening. That, that's all. Ta- Honestly, when you get a bu- when you get a bunch of warships in that close pro- proximity, all it takes is one misjudgment. And then when you got nuclear weapons involved, it's uh, it can make for some very bad repercussions. Oh, where was this here? I'm going to get into this. Matt brings up a, an interesting perspective that Germany and Japan may have still been recovering after World War II, and they were not like worried about what. That's was another thing, and that's, that's kind of something that yeah, that man. that Khrushchev was kind of relying on is that. We, Concerning the Berlin issue, because Europe didn't really care so much about the Cuban Missile Crisis as much as the Berlin issue, because they came close. Because if if the Soviet Union decided to uh, have a treaty with uh, East Germany and then close down West Berlin, that's automatically that's automatic war. And at that time, like we said, 
automatic war meant nuclear missiles crossing each other. So they were more worried about that situation more so than what was going on in Cuba, because I mean, it didn't, you know, it didn't affect them to an extent. I mean, because it doesn't matter whether, whether missiles were launched or not, everyone's going to get involved. Uh, let's see. But yes, going back to the German, Japan, I don't, they were really non-factor in this whole. Right. They were more of a puppet state at that point. Yeah. Completely. They were relying on us almost 100%. Where are we here? Did, where, where the heck did I see this? I don't know if I didn't get this. Oh, oh. yeah. Here we go. Where did it begin? There it is. Yep. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, Coster played Kenneth O'Donnell. Was oh, that who he played? Okay, no. I didn't see his name on here. This is gonna make me want to go watch it for the. I'm about to. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna watch it tonight. Actually, <laughs> it's it's a good movie, man. Yeah, oh, Derek, you gotta watch that one, man. That's good. Yeah, I mean, just well cast and well acted. The the actors that play the Kennedys, and I mean just. Everybody's position, right? It's a, it's a really solid film. I, I think a lot of people have not don't even know about it. Right? Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's one probably not now. Movies. I kind probably of stumbled on it by mistake and just loved it. Oh, uh, real quick, here we go. We're talking about how how things changed after. The, well, I don't want to know if we want to get into that yet, but yeah, let's not get into that yet. But so you got all these things happening which culminated into the damn Cuban Missile Crisis. And, I mean, how close did it – Other, take the sub situation out. Talk about just about the missiles on that island itself. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think they were even became fully operational, did they? I think they were no, just getting they, Yeah, they were trying to fear monger that they were becoming fully operational. Because, again, there's a lot of people in that room that wanted us to go ahead and attack – Regardless, I mean, they're really pushing up, well, putting the pressure on, uh, on GFK to do so. And here's the thing that we could kind of go back to because you go back to the Bay of Pigs. Could that have succeeded if Kennedy decided to use air assets? If he decided to air support those 1500, what would have been the outcome? And here's another remember I mentioned earlier about uh, Kennedy's quote of uh, the art of war by Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu, yeah. The quote I found that he used in the movie <clears throat> that Sun Tzu said that I thought was real interesting that he said to all his counsel was, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Yes. Supreme excellence consists of breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. Yes. That's deep. Yeah. If you think about yeah, it, you know who did that to a T, almost to a T, was Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. 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 If you think about it. But, uh, so, for example... And here's another, what was the reason why Kennedy didn't use air support for the Bay of Pigs? Because he didn't want to piss off the, he didn't want to piss off the Soviet Union in Europe because the Berlin crisis was in the middle. You're in the middle of the Berlin crisis. So you didn't want to do anything that was going to instigate an issue in Berlin. At the same time, you got the stupid Bay of Pigs going on, but you're not going to give it its full support. It was, it was, I think that was a huge miscalculation in doing the Bay of Pigs operation if you're not going to be able to support the guys that you're sending in there. That was that was that was another that thing could, that was another thing Kennedy supposedly did that was kind of unheard of and Bobby talked him into it was he supposedly went on national TV and admitted he was wrong. Yeah. Uh, pigs and 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 that's just you don't admit to right. weakness or being wrong. Exactly. As a nope. president, but but to actually come on national TV and saying I made a calculated mistake to admit the balls that you were to do to, so? yeah to admit that you're human yes air I think that like made Kennedy's approval rating go through made him the human like made him human I don't, I don't think you would see a president now um, do something like that hey I made a calculated mistake I was wrong like, but I'll tell you something right now. Now, here's a question. Would the Cuban Missile Crisis have happened if he didn't do that? Because now Khrushchev is watching what this guy's doing, and he's probably looking like he's soft. Hey, I could push this guy a little bit. Maybe that's why yeah, during right. the during the Veneva, uh, yeah, uh, 
the Neva summit, he was able to kind of push him and bully him around because he saw how he acted. So it's 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 admirable on one aspect, but it opened but it, him up. It opened him up. Right. And it opened him exactly. Yeah. And 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 in Cold War type of mentality, maybe there was a lot people. of there was a lot of moving parts and chess playing, and it's just it was a crazy time in history. To be honest with you, to really to. I think Khrushchev still would have did it anyway because yeah, he, that's who the, he was. At the Vienna summit, I think he maybe saw that Kennedy didn't really engage verbally, so to speak, from what reports say. So maybe he, maybe he had his mind made up on him already, even before he made the concession speech after the Bay of Pigs. That might have been like the exclamation point: "Is like, oh, this guy is easy to take advantage of. Put the missiles in Cuba; they're not going to do anything." And you know, they found out, hey, a dangerous fighter is a fighter when you back him up into the corner. Oh yeah. Yep. Yes, exactly. And, and they found out. Man, I mean, it's just, it's just fascinating. It's so much happened in that short period of time. You, you, you got the Berlin crisis. You got the Berlin Wall going up. You got the summit in Vienna where he, you know, he was getting bullied around. You got, you know, uh, you're putting missiles in Europe. That's gonna probably piss off the Russians, and you got them putting missiles in Cuba, which almost led to a damn world war. I mean, whew, thank right, God. And, uh, I mean, I would say, I would of, say uh, go ahead, go ahead, Will. I mean, he was in the middle of his, he was late and deep into his term of presidency as well. I mean, he needed something to, he needed to, to to look good to for his platform to run on, right? So, you know, you get if you push him to a corner, guess what's gonna happen? He's not gonna back down, and that's right. Yeah. Now here's uh, I was going to say, maybe off the top of my head, maybe FDR and Lincoln were the only presidents that obviously Lincoln went, went through a civil war. You can't get any bigger than that. But in right. that short period of time, and, and Kennedy was not a healthy man. He had a lot of health issues. No, he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had a bad back. Yeah. No, wonder, no wonder he was out trying to bang everybody, you know, females. He, he, was, that was, his he was all bruised up like, on painkillers and yeah, whatnot. He, I mean, Exactly, and he had to deal with a lot in his, you know, three years in office. Um, that's why he's usually, you know, right at the. He's in my top five for sure. Yeah, he, he just had top. one, you know, one fastball thrown him out after another. You know, just, yeah. and not no, yeah. not no eighty-five mile an hour fastball either. No, like, he's a yeah. hundred and twenty man. Yeah. He's going, yeah, these are the big yeah. ones, and, and he was a young dude too. I mean, he was a young yeah. man. Yeah, I mean, such wisdom yeah. for his age, you know. God. Yeah, big time. Big yeah, time. he but, injured uh, his back. In fact, in World War Two. Yeah. Did He's he on injure a, his back on that on that Navy vessel, or he was? Yeah, the like, PT boat. PT one hundred and nine. Yep. In yep. fact, they made a movie of that, right? PT one hundred and nine. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I yep. actually made PT one hundred and nine as a model back when I was a kid. Oh, did you? Yeah, I think it was cool, man. PT boats are pretty badass, man. Yeah, they were. Go in there yeah. fast as hell, throwing out torpedoes and getting out of there. And, you know, kind of venturing off just a little bit, but, I mean, the whole JFK conspiracy theory, there's so many out there. I mean, oh my if, gosh. If, if, if the CIA did have anything to do with it. <clears throat> okay, here's a question. We can kind of get holding, into were they, were they holding a grudge from this Cuban Missile Crisis? Now, with him being assassinated, was it, was it because of domestic issues? Was it because of foreign policy issues? Was it a combination of both? Was it both? Yeah. Okay. Both. And do you sure. think it was an inside job or do you think it was uh foreign actors? No, it was an inside job all the inside, way. Inside job. I think it was an inside job. For inside sure. job. Mafia definitely had a hand in that one. Why would the mafia be involved? The old man. The mafia had, had Kennedy elected right. through his dad. And, and then, then Robert F. Kennedy goes after him. Robert mafia. goes after him like a few months <laughs> you, later. They, the mafia says, hey, we'll hey, we get you elected and now you're trying to snuff us out. Right, which they went to the old man and said, hey, we're, your, your, your son is doing this. We gave him the seat. Now the other guy's going after us. Can you broker this for us? Yeah, because he made yeah. him uh, attorney general, so he was going after mafia, right? Right. Yeah, I, wonder, sure. I wonder if that was a conflict between the brothers. I wonder if behind, it, it, it probably had to have been. Yeah. I, I wonder behind the scenes if John was like saying, "Hey, these guys helped us get elected. Like, don't go after them." And Bobby's just like, "Now, no. here's a question: How could it be? How could it be kept such a secret? Secret if it was the mafia doing this kind of a job? It doesn't seem like it would be this 
it, the secret to last this long? I think a couple of things. You, different cut of man back then. You don't have the TikTokers like now. But secondly, I think the CIA had a hand in the whole thing as well. Okay, so gotcha. So you think there is other? Right. It wasn't. It wasn't a mafia acting alone. Were they gotcha. probably? A, were they probably a trigger man involved in some way? For sure. But were oh, they a CIA? Have, have, was the CIA pulling the strings? Oh. I have a I have a book that I've read that that implicates you know LBJ. You know yeah. he, had, oh, that's, that's he had the most to gain. He he hated the Kennedys, and rumor has it that you know for the sixty four election, uh, JFK was going to take him off the vice president ticket. So now here's a conspiracy mm. for you. Who stole JFK's brain? You hear about that one? This brain's yeah. missing. Yeah. Well, was there any was left? A lot of cover up on the <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, you guys are more, you know, obviously, you know, uh, uh, guns and, and, and oh, how, yeah. you know, heads, you know, snap. I mean, when you see Kennedy's head, it's not snap back back. The way it is. that that wouldn't be from a shot from that's behind. not from a shot from behind no, yeah, I, from the front and the side mm -hmm. so that right there would implicate like there was somebody in the grassy knoll that took a you, shot you watch the video and you'd be like okay yeah there's definitely more than one shooter like, what what is this bs 100 now was oswald a shooter sure he might have been a, a shooter. shooter one was shooter. He the shooter no come on no oh, man no. he was yeah that doesn't that doesn't pass he was a he down. was a patsy caught up in the in the communist stream they promised him all this bs and he went along with he wasn't so the smartest why man in the did, world. They offer him? did he know too much you gotta tie you know you gotta tie up your loose ends. And but why Jack Ruby? Why did he ever need a scapegoat? Jack why Ruby Jack was part of the mafia. Okay, he was that's part what of, I thought. It was a mafia right, was part of the mafia. Gotcha. And in the book that I'm reading, uh the the two shooters that were in the grassy knoll, they were dressed up as secret service. They just mm -hmm. had their badges to make it look like they were the recruiter film, yeah. They got yeah, that's that's pretty fantastic. I mean, now here's the deal. How do we know this is really going off the deep end here? Yeah, that's that's cool, though. how do we cool, know though. Lee Hall's Lee Harvey Oswald actually died? You don't. You don't. You There's don't rumors that he was still living. In fact, people were chasing down his wife for years, asking about where he's at and so on and so forth. Hey, where where is Lee Harvey at? Where did he really die? They were they pestered her for eons. I remember there was an anniversary oh, of, of of the assassination almost uh, I want to say almost thirty years ago, something like that. And so they had a Okay, oh, <laughs> but they but they what they were they were like going after his wife like they had a documentary people out there on his door. What do you think happened? What do you think really happened to him? You know, it was uh, it's crazy, but uh, so yeah, you, Ruby, Ruby shot a blank, and it was staged as 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 a real bullet murder. I don't know, man. You, you you get gut shot by a thirty eight caliber, man. You're I'm gonna say you're toast. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Man, so that's that's, like, that's my uh, that's my a deep thing. cover up right there. Like they staged that to. Looked like a murder, and they whisked him away real quick. And yeah, yeah, yeah. he was gone. Yeah, exactly. And you never heard. Well, from I him believe again. he died right then and there. Right? I mean, he didn't last very long. I mean, yeah. But I mean, this is nineteen. This is nineteen sixty. So you could cover up a lot more than you could now. Exactly. That's what this I'm saying. It's not like it is more. today. Yeah. And we're you know we're still talking about Hoffa. You know where is Hoffa buried? And whatnot? You know, right. Jimmy. Who was also part of he was also involved in this whole thing to do with JFK. Part of the yeah, I'll tell you the 60s. Whew, oh my god. Between MLK, between the Kennedy, both Kennedys, both Kennedys, Malcolm, MLK, Malcolm, Malcolm, X, Malcolm X, between Hoffa, like man, and I was born in one fucked up decade. <laughs> fucked up decade. God, I'm, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm on top of all that. Not, there you go, man. I'm glad miss. I made it, man. I, I, I was born in a really hard decade. And that's not even, you're not even accounting for the race riots, the, the oh. anti-war sentiment, the, I mean. Oh, God. Oh. It was probably the worst decade. No, well, oh, yeah, and also Vietnam and... War. <laughs> Other, other than the Civil War, it's probably that was probably the roughest decade in, the, in our country's history, as well as the uh, the war of independence, obviously, too. Yeah, oh, no, but by I the know way, exactly. I, start, I started watching a, 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 a Amazon Prime video, it's called Lawman Something Bass. Um, it's it, oh, it's yeah, a, a I watched episode one, um, uh, about this uh, a, a black soldier, uh, in the, in the Civil War. Woo! It's pretty good. Go check it out, Lawman. Yeah, he was um, he was a real deal. That's a he was a real um, bounty hunter and everything. 
yeah, Lawman Something Bass. It's on Amazon Prime. If you uh, if you want to watch something that's pretty intense, <laughs> Bass yeah. Reeves. Yeah, his name is Bass Reeves. Bass, Bass Reeves. Reeves. Thank you, thank you. So it's either episode two or thirteen days after I get off of here. Will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, they're good. Oh hell yeah, dude. I don't, I'll go for, roll. Hey man, it doesn't matter which one, right? It's good. That was good. Sirhan hey. Sirhan that killed Bobby. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And what was that all about? Who know? I don't know. Hmm. Tying up loose ends. Dead men don't talk. Yeah. Tying up loose ends again, maybe. Who knows? Sirhan, Sirhan. What was his nationality? Was he? Was he Turkish? Was he? So there was an attempted assassination on Ford and Reagan. Oh, he was. He was Palestinian. Oh, he's Palestinian. (laughs) Sirhan, Sirhan was. He's a Palestinian. Well, there you go. (laughs) Those damn. Okay. He's still in prison, right? I don't think he, the, no, would he just die recently? I can't remember. I think, yeah, uh, I think he did. Yeah, just recently. He yeah. attempted assassination on Ford, wasn't that in San Francisco? Ooh, I'm not sure on that one. I think so. I think it was actually False positive. I know the uh, I know the Soviet Union was behind trying to assassinate Pope John Paul. Wow. Yeah, it was oh wait, hold on. Uh, Gerald Ford attempt, attempt to assassinate the Sacramento and San Francisco. There was two assassination attempts. Wow, twice, oh, twice, one after another. Yeah, one and one, one here in Sacramento, and the one over there in San Francisco. Man, Crazy. leave the poor guy alone. He, oh, he's only president for like two years. <laughs> he didn't want to be president, right? man. Really, it's a bad joke, but maybe it was probably a Chevy man. Probably, yeah. <laughs> you know, Chevy and Ford had their little war going, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh. Yeah, far this, on, this far on. Far on, far on. <laughs> I just saw that. Oh my gosh. Uh, God, it looks like an old far yeah, on. Oh man. It actually, well, he does look like an old far on. Well, we could say he assassinated the San Francisco Giants. So we could he probably could be a there. distant relative. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, oh man. That's going to be a thumbnail for you to make. Uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I think oh. so. I think so. <laughs> about 150 you pounds lighter. Screwed. You got you got Louis the seal, and you got a guy with a gun to the back of his head. Oh man, I, I made a I made a brand new thumbnail for Dan because you saw that picture he sent to all of us, right? Oh yeah, yeah. What I want to know how Cap, I want to know how any man can stamp their feet together like that. First of all, that's, that was that was why I asked him how the hell was he able to stamp like that? <laughs> oh man, that was pretty good. Oh god. But uh, what was uh, I think. Oh, yeah, we can kind of go into this real quick. Uh, about the effects of the, where is it? Oh, was it burned? I think it was this one. The after effects of uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis and how we talked about how they got rid of kind of brinkmanship. Mm-hmm. As Kennedy wanted above all to demonstrate his strength right away, he ri- risked worsening the anticipated Berlin crisis with Moscow by announcing further increases to the defense budget. He says in a formulation of this policy, a veteran of the first Berlin crisis, Dean At- Atkinson, yeah, he was uh, he worked for the Eisenhower administration. I think he was the right, Secretary yeah. of State, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Secretary yeah. of State, you know, President Truman. I think he was also under, I could have sworn I thought he was, I'm trying Maybe to remember. I know he worked for the Eisenhower. But he talked about drastic armament, would, uh, armament measures would be sufficient to attain U.S. goal in Berlin to maintain the status quo. Okay, no, actually, this is before. So I uh, said, uh, yeah, this is actually before the Berlin crisis. It says the American dilemma during the Berlin crisis elicited a strategic shift of favorable response or flexible response. I'm sorry. In the aftermath of the Vienna fiasco and the reality of nuclear stalemate, the Western militaries discussed the predicament they faced in conflict over West Berlin, because no one wanted to go nuclear war over West Berlin. Right. And its access routes, both air, land, air and land, no sea. Uh, it seemed unrealistic, for instance, that the United States would risk mutual destruction in order to distangle, distangle a convoy held up by the GR troops near Maddenburg. American General Lor- uh, Loris Norstad, NATO Supreme Commander, told a worry head of the British general staff that he found it intolerable to have no other options other than declare nuclear war or accept the Soviet East German conditions. So they started understanding, hey, you know, we can't just go to nuclear war for every little thing. Mm-hmm. 
uh, let's see. The Berlin Wall came to symbolize the transition from confrontation to cooperative competition of systems and a peaceful coexistence during the Cold War. Over the entire decade in the 1960s, U.S. security policy was based on further developing the 1961 approach. Crucial to this was willingness of Kennedy's and Johnson's Democratic administrations to stimulate the economy through government spending, <laughs> including an expanded military budget, as well as Vietnam War, which demonstrated that conventional warfare could still be planned and waged. NATO officially adopted a flexible response strategy in January of 1968. So people started getting an understanding that, you know, we just can't go to nuclear war for everything. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that, I mean, that includes the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. Again, I don't think it was it wasn't meant to go nuclear. It was just meant as leverage to try to get concessions from the Americans. Mm -hmm. But like I said, when you get all those people, you know, the way because I don't know if he I wonder if he thought that Kennedy would respond as what as he did, you know, when they had the blockade, you know, threatening a land invasion, an air war, whatever it may be. I don't know if Khrushchev really thought that Kennedy had it in him to do that just because he was able to push him around on the other issues. So there was a, a there was a movie in the early 80s called War Games. I remember War Games. Roderick, and that was that was a pretty emphatic like showing of what would happen if both countries like shot all our missiles. Yeah, exactly. Out how the lights would pop up here, 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 and, yeah. and, and the amount of dead that would just start rising and rising and rising. It was it was pretty powerful. I think it was 19, Jesus, 82. Yeah. Would you oh, like to play a game? Yeah. 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 Yep. <laughs> I love that one. Oh, the Whopper. Yeah. Will, have you seen that one? No, I haven't. Oh, I've heard hey. of it. got to go it. watch it. War, War Games. Games. 19, Put it on my list. Or 83. Hey, we got a lot of. TV stuff for you to watch, man. You're going to be busy. Yeah. Oh, the, the, what happens is that, that starts it off with it shows uh, missile officers in the silo and they're supposed to launch the missiles, right? It was, but it was a test, but you didn't know that it was a test and they wouldn't do it. You know, they had the human element in the train to launch these nuclear missiles because they understood if we launch the missiles, what it means. So because of that exercise, they decided to have a supercomputer basically control everything as far as yep. nuclear missiles. But the problem is, is that damn, what, ha what, what happened was Matthew, oh, I don't want to give it away. Never mind. You watch it. Go watch it. So, uh, it's on Anyways, YouTube, that computer it. comes into play. It's pretty visual. Some... Yeah, it is. I'll check it out. I mean, yeah, I've seen the trailer before. I, I think I might have seen part of this, but I don't think I've watched it all the way through. Oh, that's it great. It's It made hacking kind of glorious at that time. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, when Terminator Two came out, and it really oh, Terminator showed 2, yeah. Terminator Two came out, and it showed like how, well, I mean, in in a, in a movie viewer's eyes, like when a if a nuclear bomb dropped, like how it just would devastate. Oh yeah, like, remember remember that footage, and this was like oh yeah, early nineties, early nineties, apocalyptical nuclear bomb going off in L.A. Yeah, that, yeah was that was nuts. Intense. You're like, that's what would happen? Oh, we <laughs> really don't need to go there, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they didn't have uh, that kind of uh, technology in the 60s to show a movie to say, oh, we really need to don't ever get to that point. Um, and again, it kind of involved AI. That's kind of <laughs> what War Games was. It was AI to a certain extent without calling it AI. But uh, yeah. how about, you, you remember that show, uh, The Day After? The day after, oh yeah, that yeah, was sure. that scared the living about Jesus. That well, really... remember those um remember the, the back before all that uh, it was kind of like those movies like the Omega Man. Uh, after you know after everybody disappears at the last man on earth kind of thing because all the, all the freaks are out there because of all the nuclear radiation and mm. what was the other one I Am Legend or something like that I Am kinda Legend yeah, that kind of stuff Will Smith's movie yeah uh, what do they call those uh... Holocaust movies. Or... Not dystopian, Holocaust. dystopian movies or something. Dystopian. Dystopians. Yeah, that's kind of makes you think about that. What would happen after you know, humans get a little nuked to hell? Um, what was the other one? I was just thinking of. Oh, you know what's a really, you know what is a fantastic series to watch? Watch the old school Twilight Zones. There are so many stories based on nuclear catastrophes. It's crazy. <laughs> that's the biggest topic at the time, actually. Yeah, it was. 
And he was doing it. I mean, he was attacking issues that were like way ahead of its time in the moment. Yeah. He tackled guys, race. He tackled nuclear war. I mean. Have you guys done an episode on the, on the civil war yet? Uh, yeah, matter of fact, we kind of did that on our last one. We got got we've into a little a, bit of Chickamauga. We've into, we've into we got a little bit into the railroad stuff. Cool. But we I got a buddy who's a, I got a buddy who's a reenactor. We've been trying to get on here for a little bit. He, that guy knows a lot, especially about the especially about the Confederacy. Yeah, it was an ABC <laughs> movie. The day after, yep, it was on TV. Yep. Have you seen the Night Stalker documentary? Can get an old school yeah, that was. Military guy. Oh, the Night Stalker documentary is great. No, was not yeah, but when, you can, that was a fruit loop, man. when you can get an old school military person and, and just talk about their stories, it's it's really fascinating. Yeah, it is absolutely seventies, eighties, and they talk about certain things. Matter of fact, we had a guy in here came in there. I remember it was his name, Jacob something. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, something like that. He was a twenty year army vet. He that's what he says. I don't got reason to disbelieve, but that's what he said. He was hey, trying Robert to... Robert Rothberg is up there in age, you know. Yeah, he... man. Wonder if he ever served. I'll have to ask him. Yeah, he could he can probably tell us what was like uh how he felt when Kennedy was shot. Oh yeah, man, that's something we can ask him. Man, that would be perfect. He's, he's or of... um uh Tom Wyatt's who he watches every once in a while. He's up he's in the seventies. Tom Wyatt's? Yeah. Hmm. Every every person that I talk to that's that's like significantly older that was alive when Kennedy shot they 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 all talk like in that was really, a huge moment yeah really emotional terms um, not just in the country but like the world he was he was uh, he was a very popular president at the time um, yeah that Berlin spe speech was huge I am a donut. <laughs> 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 that's what they say. That's, I guess that's what he what it translated what, to. What do you try to translate into? What did it say? Uh, it's yeah. been I'm Berliner. Yeah, I am a donut. I mean, is it, is it pretty consensus uh, when you see polls and and you start talking about the greatest presidents of all time? Is it consensus that Lincoln is usually one? Oh, it's got to be or number FDR. one. Him? It's or either FDR. Lincoln or Washington usually. Washington, yeah. Or FDR, FDR one. FDR could there. be up there just because of yeah, the, the world deal. was on fire at that time. Yeah, he, he said a lot of things in motion that kind of turned the country around. So. Yeah, you, you know, uh, as far as <laughs> we're still praying for some of those today. <laughs> you know as far as internal issues, yeah, Washington and and Lincoln by far, and then as far as external, yeah, it would be dealing with uh, foreign adversaries. Yeah, FDR is up there. Yeah, a, I mean, it's, just, it's it's crazy just thinking about that stuff, though. Just how it all, like I said, you got to kind of piece everything together of how it came to that conclusion, which is fat. That's what makes it so fascinating. Well, that's why I started out, you know, the show with my own rhetoric about, you know, we're predominantly on here for sports and we talk about what if and what if. And mm -hmm. that, that, okay, that changes history, right. well, like who's a champion. But I mean, to go through the what ifs, like I said, what if Nixon was president? What if, what if Castro had more pull than Khrushchev? Those missiles would have been fired, you know. Um, so I mean, we're talking about what if, like really changing history. Yeah. Just, you can almost. I don't think anything. the Soviet Union would have ever given Fidel control of those weapons ever. They probably, if they thought he would, they probably wouldn't even placed them in Cuba. To be honest with you. If I know you, Eric. Uh, Either tonight or tomorrow, you're going to study about China's involvement with. Uh, <laughs> oh the yeah, I'm going to find out what was China's involvement in Cuba because they're definitely involved now. They're definitely <laughs> involved now. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. a bit too much. And don't don't fall for you know we're on good terms with China ever since this APEC summit in San Francisco because <laughs> no, just because they talk doesn't mean anything's going to happen. Hey, MF, if, if you're, uh, is your, is your grandpa and your uncle still, uh, I think he said they've already passed. They've already passed. Yeah. Uh, man, I, I love talking to, to people like that. Jeez. No, I mean, I used to talk. I, to I, I mean, like all day, uh, take yeah. me camp, take me camping with, uh, with, with people like that and just sit around a bonfire until like, Oh, I know. With a few, with, with, with a few alcoholic beverages, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Like, I, oh I yeah. It's funny. When, when I grew up, uh, 
you know, in our neighborhood in Tracy, this is when it was small, man. There was only like 20, 30,000 people. But on our block, there was another Vietnam vet down the way. And my my dad and mom, they would always sit outside on the front lawn and lawn chairs, you know, talking to other neighbors, whatever it may be. But when they'd start talking about Vietnam stuff, it was just like, wow. It was it was pretty it was pretty intense. But just listening to it, it's just like, you know, listening to a documentary it was fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Well, it, it, it's funny, 50, 60 years from now, like people are going to be talking about like, what was it like to go through COVID? What was the world like to go through COVID? And, you know, we have had our mm-hmm. own issues here in, in different ways or, or our own conflicts, you know, like we got going now in the Middle East and, and things like that. But nothing like that extreme that was like, the, like, a six, like I said, the 60s was just a decade of all decades. My God. Oh, yeah everything that happened it was it's incredible that we got through it as got through clean it. as we did to, to, to an extent i mean we still had vietnam war and i mean you still had a bunch of craziness happen but we were able to get through it as a country which is a testament you know to the strength that the country can show the resilience if we could L- only do it now lbj had a different perspective on vietnam than than nixon did for sure mm. oh yeah he was a warmonger nixon wanted to get out mm. Which is kind of almost kind of because if you noticed, it's ever since say t- September 11th, it's always the Repu- it's always been seemed like oh Republicans are all about war. They just warmongers, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. It was mostly the Democrats <laughs> that, that were the warmongers, and you know the the Republicans not wanting to get involved. Yeah. I mean, there's some, sometimes you have to. Sometimes you got to pick and choose. But. Yeah. You guys gonna keep going? Yeah, I think we'll go on just for a little while longer than. Oh, sure. Then shut it down. But hey, right. appreciate it, Los, for hey, hanging yeah, out. This was this was fun. The, anytime you come up with some 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 good ones, I'm here. I, I absolutely enjoyed it. Real, real, real well done, man. Keep doing your thing, boys. All right, appreciate it. All right, we'll right see on, you maybe Lose. sometime this weekend. Maybe I think we're gonna do something on NorCal. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. We'll do something for sure. Sounds good. All right, boys. Enjoy Take the night. Easy, Make sure you watch those shows, Will. I will. Yeah, man. war games. War games. Yeah. There you I'm go. On, Peace, Take guys. Care, see ya. Peace. All right, there was Los, man. I appreciate him showing up. That was fun. Yeah, that was good, cool, man. Good stuff. That was good stuff. I like what we talked about today. That was that was yeah. fun. Enjoyed it a lot, man. Alive. There's so much, and the thing is, man, you could go on so many different directions. Like on this this topic alone, we could spend a whole show on the the Vienna summit. You could spend a right. whole show on the Berlin crisis. You could spend a whole show on the Cuban Missile Crisis. I mean, honestly, the Cuban Missile Crisis was kind of like the the apex of all these other things that happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was, it was kind of like the defined finale in all that. No, yeah, well, it was, uh, it was a culminating. Nagling in the early sixties. Yep. Man. Oh, <laughs> Aaron. Does that have first knowledge of the revolutionary war? <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh my gosh. Damn, that was a fun discussion right there. It was an overwhelming majority. There's like every single person voted for Cuban Missile Crisis. Every single one. Tell you Except what, for one, one, the one I voted for Battle Claude. And I, voted, <laughs> I voted for that one. It is like, that's the only vote he got. I think uh, another, another good one there is the uh, Bien Din Phu. Uh, that was Bien, that Din, was, uh, Din Bien Phu. However, the hell you pronounce that? The absolute. We almost went to nuclear war over that too. Like oh, I said, yeah. the advisors of Eisenhower was telling him, "Hey, let's go nuke them." That, that was, was a just huge an absolute death. brutal siege that the uh, was unleashed oh, on those the guys. French got decimated, dude. Decimated. And that's, that same general met the uh, met uh, Colonel Moore on the battlefield in Idron in the Idron Valley. Yep. Did you know uh, Ho Chi Minh? He actually. He was, oh, he was at one the, of our friends. He was what? used to be one of our friends, which is crazy. What what I'm what did I re- I'm trying to remember? First, he was at the signing of the uh, Treaty of Versailles, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he was. He was. Yep. And uh, he went to he went to uh, wait. Hold on. Uh, I'll, I'll get that in a bit. But uh, he went to college. Did he go to college in Paris? I believe he did. Yeah, he did. I think he did. Yeah, he, he, did. He, 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 yeah, he was a very intelligent guy. He was actually a big fan of the United States. 
he was, but then he get, they kept denying him and he turned socialist. Right. <laughs> and the, yeah, then he isn't that crazy? Bird. Yep. Yeah. He got pissed off and said, okay, maybe I'll just go see these people and they'll help me out. That's Nuts, man. He, he overthrew the uh, the sitting, what do you call himself, an emperor at the time? Whoever it was that was in charge of Vietnam. I don't know if they call himself a president. He ended up, he overthrew him. Next thing you know, we're, we're fighting a war over him, over yep. a guy that used to be our friend. Exactly. <laughs> crazy. I mean, it's just crazy. It's. A, I mean, Los Tots touched on this, but I also touched on this not that long ago, too, when we first started the show, is many of uh, our friends today were our enemies. The UK. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we got our independence from them, but yet they're, they're probably our closest ally in Europe. Germany, right, and- another close ally. We were their mortal enemies in World War II. Japan, we nuked them. <laughs> and they're our, our strongest ally in the Pacific. Right. And China, they, who we were friends with in the past, are now our, almost our, like our damn near mortal enemies. <laughs> right. You know, and then on the other flip side, it's almost dangerous to be an ally of ours because we end up sometimes killing our allies. Saddam Hussein used to be our ally. <laughs> yeah. Osama uh, bin Laden, Osama was, an bin Laden was an ally. Well, Osama an bin Laden al- yeah. was an ally. The list goes on, man. I mean, it's, it's just the way geopolitics work. Oh, don't forget Gaddafi. Gaddafi, Gaddafi was, was our buddy. Very powerful ally of ours yep. for, for quite a bit of time. Yep. I mean, it's it's crazy. It, 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 you learn about this stuff and you can kind of see it's all geopolitical. That's all it, all it is. You know, it makes that yeah. game play. It makes that board game risk even much. Fun. Risk. I remember but, you know, Risk. Yeah, that was a yeah, great game, man. Oh man, I used to play it all the time. Even, even as a kid, when I really couldn't understand what the hell was going on. I exactly. <laughs> I just like to put an armies together and say I'm a white. Right. Up. I've got seventy three <laughs> troops over here. What are you gonna do, bro? Come after me. Oh man. man. What was the other game they had? Remember that one game? Um, it was almost almost like a capture flag game, but like a. Uh, like you would have like a spy or a, God, I got the, I can't remember the name of this thing now. Oh shit! Uh, let th- me see real quick. Is that ceasefire in effect yet? I don't think so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up live UA map, see what I can see. Hopefully it works. Right Stratego. Now. Stratego. That was so awesome, man! I used to play that. Stratego. Oh, I forgot that about is, that one. That is such a good game. I have to buy a board set just because of that. Ooh, they have a Lord of the Rings risk. Interesting. What do we got here? Four hours ago, Israeli cabinet approves hostage deal with Hamas. That's the latest I saw. All right, hold on. Give me one quick second. I'll be right back. Are you good? Oh, yeah, Stratego was amazing, man. That was the game I was thinking about. Where you got the spies and you got the – what else did you have? Let me, let me see this thing. The bombs. Yeah, we used to play this all the time. We used to play at my daycare when I was a kid. I can remember that far back. It was a billion years ago now at this point. Let's see here. Looks like uh looks like Dan did another trade. Kyron Williams. Oh, I'm not worried about that guy. Let me see the box score on this real quick. All right, let me see. I'm pull up live UA map real quick. Let's see if we find something. Something worthy. Oh yeah, I wasn't banking on Henderson. He, I just need him to fill in. Um, because if I didn't, have, if I didn't trade for Henderson, I wouldn't have anybody to play at the running back role. So I traded for Henderson, knowing full well that he wasn't going to play next week. Oh, so, the deal we made. Yeah, which is what I told you. I was like, yeah, he's not going to play next week, so you can have Palmer. And then you got man. Today. Did you see me squeak that son of a gun out? <laughs> yeah. I won by 1.1. 1. 1. Oh my god. 1.1. 1. Did you see did you see the Vince McMahon uh gifts yeah, up I did. there? The 
I had to, man. This one, uh, the, the mine and uh, the, the battle between me and uh, Dan this week has got me ahead by 0. 0.6, by 0. Oh, 0. 0.06. There's a lot of close games this week. A lot of close games. I might end up losing this one. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. You're playing Dan, right? Yeah. There's a lot. I'm, it's right now. It shows me getting blasted, but it. We'll see what happens. I guess. Yeah, a, Dan and uh, Dan, me and Lois have a pretty bad schedule going in the playoffs. If we all play each other, we all have really good teams. Uh, what do we got here? Let me take a gander real quick. Might as well get into this. God, it was so damn close. We could kind of decompress a little bit because we were getting into some pretty good stuff this time, man. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. And there we go. This is the – oh, it shows me a 119 – whoa, what? There. It's 144. There we go. So it shows me losing the truck while well, Ryan – it looks like Sean might lose to Heroku, man. He's got a hell of a damn. Well, Metcalf, Metcalf may not play. Say what? Hold on. I didn't, hold on. I didn't see that. I didn't get no notification. I always, I always get a notification if I do. Oh, it does. It says questionable. Let's see what it says here. What the hell? He's a walking. A new toe injury, adding to his hip and rib issues he's dealt with earlier this season. Oh, man. Injury and did not play. I'm sure he does not bode well. Son of a... He likes that sick call, man. Mother... Hold on. Let me see here. Unbelievable, man. Check out this league analyzer. Oh, man, my eyes. There we go. I just, I fixed that. I fixed that one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, I'm projected to end the season at 10 and 4. I went and picked up my uh my tried and true replacement for, for Metcalf, and that's Bobo. Well, you got so Palmer got, too if he comes off IR. I don't think he's coming off IR to this week, I don't think. I don't think so. He'd be great going forward. Let me see what he's got here. Let's see what Palmer what Oh man, me. check this out. They got me. He's still percent. he's still on IR. Is he uh when's he come off that? He should be off IR this week, I would imagine. It says no no news updates for Joshua Palmer in the last 10 days. Let me go to Fantasy Pros. Yeah, see what you can see on there. Gosh, dang it. Because he would be good. I can, I, Dan says great I news for the 49ers. <laughs> I don't care about the 49ers. I care about my damn fantasy football team. <laughs> That's right, man. This is me, myself, and I right now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay, let me find Josh for Palmer. You could now Kansas City, they kind of rooted it for the Niners yesterday. That just makes it more hard and that much more difficult for the Niners to finish number one than the number one seed. Okay, Joshua Palmer could possibly return from IR in week 13 if he is fully recovered from his knee injury. So uh, next week. He's had at least 60 receiving yards and seven targets in the last four of his five games. It's a pretty good addition on your team. Yeah, no kidding. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I could get him in those last two weeks. We'll see. If oh, yeah. not, maybe that last week. Because I wanted to hold on to him, but I needed somebody to. I need. I needed points. I needed points, so I needed to get a running back in there. Couldn't leave the spot empty. Yeah, exactly. And now he's a bum. <laughs> now he's... And now, and now he's gone. Yep. No, he's a, he ain't like on anybody's team. Well, didn't you, did you have no? You didn't have who had Kyron? Do you have Kyron? Oh, uh, Dan's got him now. Oh, okay. But yeah, this is what we got going forward. Again, these projections—you do what you want with them. 
God dang it, it oh, keeps yeah. going back. I don't know why it keeps going back. I don't back. know why it goes. That was already that's yesterday's news. I don't I know. know why it keeps going to that. There here we go. Is. This is the real meat potatoes right here. The battle, the battle of the... for playoff spots is pretty pretty good. You still got a chance to make it in. If I win out, but man, if freaking if Metcalf doesn't go, that's gonna make it tough. We got the bat the battle for 12th place going on there at the very bottom between pretty 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 and Brock the Party. Look at Bora. He's on a four-game winning streak. <laughs> yeah, he's got to face Los. Should be interesting. Hold on. What's the uh, Los's team look like? Oh, Los's team is going to be out of um, you no know, Kenneth Walker, right? That's going to be interesting. Well, Kenneth Walker was kind of on a downturn for a little bit, too. Yeah, you and Dan right now. Like you said, point zero six. That's going to be a tight Woo. one, man. That one's gonna, you know, it's gonna come down to his matchups. Yeah, exactly. That's what it usually comes down to, anyway. You know, for most of these yep. things. Yep, yep. Let me see here. Ooh, I don't know if Bora might be able to pull one out. You think it? You think so? I think he. Well, see, he's got. He that, had a uh, lot of guys overperform last week. He did. He, he's got the Houston Texans stack with Nico Collins and Tank Dell. Yeah, Tank Dell, he went 31 points, and I think he was projected like 12 or something. Yeah, he came out of nowhere. Now he's like a 16th rated uh, receiver in the league now. It's like, what the right. fuck? Now, he's not going to – yeah, he might put up points, but 31, I mean, that was a shit ton of points right there. Oh, he's got three Houston Texans on it. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really like stacking players too much. Did Houston already have their bye? I believe so. Then he's well, then, then he's okay until, yeah, you know, bye. but if – but if the quarterback gets hurt, oh yeah, your quarterback gets hurt. You're, man, I, I was sitting there yesterday. I was nervous, dude, watching that Kansas City game because freaking Hurts is eating the sacks left and right. I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, Dan. It, in fact, Haruku's like, if you look at the power rankings now, like he's dropped considerably. Did he really? Yeah, it's um, I think he's I think he's just after me now. No, no, he's after. So it's uh, Dan, MF, me, Los, and then uh, Haruka. Oh, I didn't even know Larry was on at this time. That figures. Well, I, I saw no he idea. was on with um, that one guy. I can't remember his name. Oh, was he on? No, was it the talking about guy? Talking about the Niners and stuff. Oh, come. Okay. There's only up, so Kyle? much. There's only so much Niners stuff I can consume, man. There's so many guys out there I watch. Yeah. For I prefer Dan Coach Emilio. Prefer I prefer the Marcal Sports Network. Yep, yep. But when Absolutely. I'm not watching the Marcal Sports Network, I'm, I might see me in Rombo's chat. I like Rombo, that's where I met Chardon. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. I remember you talking about that. Yeah, me and Val. <laughs> Chardon. Oh, he was on him. with Raj. Raj, that's right. Yeah, that's right. They do that show. I do the call and show what tomorrow, I think. Rombo does this stuff on Sundays and Mondays. Let's see. Dan is welcome, but on this his screen, he will be blacked out for <laughs> Yeah. What a mess. MF says. What a mess indeed. It's making for, it's making it for interesting, you know, matchups here, depending on you know who who Balls out and who doesn't, but it's all individual. This is going to be a weird week, right? Because we got what three days of football, four days yeah, of football Thursday, we Friday, got... Saturday, or Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Monday, right? I got a I got a work Friday too. It's going to be weird because I got a game going on at what 12 o'clock or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a last. I don't know why they don't just go ahead and give you the next day off of Thanksgiving. It doesn't make any sense to me. What are you gonna what are you gonna do? I mean, especially when you're Nothing. in sales. Exactly. Everybody's, when you're everybody's, in sales, everybody's everybody's gone, gone. man. Everyone's all, gone. All, all the decision makers are out the door. They've been on vacations probably since sometimes since Monday. So I mean, exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, sales, yeah, that makes man. no sense. You you lose about three weeks of Oh, I think Senior was talking about, yeah, Napoleon's coming out this weekend, but I heard... Oh, that's right. It's like, I heard it's going to have more... It's more of a romance than... A, than like, I'm going to be disappointed because I'm going to rent that. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. 
that's what we were talking about doing. Yeah, just um, wait till it comes. I don't want to go to a damn movie theaters are so overpriced now, man. Uh, they are, dude. And like the movie theaters, I got there's some real bad actors at these movie theaters out here. Yeah, I bet. Um, I don't for whatever freaking reason, man. Like the um, one on Greenback's nasty, and then even the one over here in Roseville is kind of getting weird now. Oh, no kidding. The one off of um, Olympus Point. Isn't there um, what the hell, Blue Oaks Drive or something like that? Or yeah, that, that, yeah, that area. For whatever reason, it's just it's getting uh, a little dicey out there. Is it really? Wow. Well, not, the one in Lodi is not so bad. Oh, no. what do we got here? He says Giants will either get Otani or Yamamoto. Who the hell says that, man? Who the hell says that? We're not getting here. Here's one. Here's some breaking news. We're not getting either one of those guys. <laughs> they're, they're, they're What's you're up? freaking. New. Ain't happening, man. On a topic of military. Oh, speaking so. of which, oh, real quick, do you see what these damn bad? I'm talking bad starting pitchers are getting. Yeah, Kyle, yeah, I, uh, Kyle Gibson is getting 12 million dollars for one year. Lance Lynn is getting 10 million dollars for one year. Seriously, how much is Yamamoto or Blake Snell going to bring in? They're going to be. They're going to break the bank. If if they're if teams are paying that much for bad starting pitching, looking at a couple hundred million bucks. Oh, starting at two hundred, easily, easily. I, would would it shock you if Snell makes three hundred? Would it no. shock you? No, no. it wouldn't. Or the Japanese guy. The Japanese guy, yeah, exactly. You got <laughs> he might even see four hundred million. Who knows? Dude? Who knows, man? I mean, at this point. I mean, uh, you know, Otani is the big talk right now, but somebody's going to pay a big price for that guy. Somebody's going to make make a big it's, old it's deal. Gonna be, it's going to be nuts. It's going to be nuts. And Luciano, you see the report coming out of Luciano? Not good. 59 at bats that and doing shit. Oh, Not good, dude. No bueno, man. This, this could wind up being a bust. You know, he's playing winter ball down in, what is it? I don't know if it's Dominican he's Republic. He's playing winter ball. Yeah, he's playing winter ball. A bunch of nobodies, and he's struggling that bad. And he, he's, I, mean, I think he's got a 31% strikeout rate. He's batting like yeah. 170. He's only got one home run. 31, 31% strikeout rate means he's got no discipline at all. He's just swinging at everything. He's just you In winter ball, you need to be putting up like game – Uh, what did you call it? Video game numbers. He, he, Not, should, be, he should be batting like 340. Yep. You know, and, and and a whiff rate of fifteen percent, somewhere around exactly thirty one percent is just you're swinging at everything. That's literally what that is. That's not good. And, and what that means to me, he's trying to go yard on everything. Maybe, which mm. is cool. Yeah, it's cool if you could hit the ball, <laughs> you know. But here's Kyle the Schwarber deal. has got a massive and it, and, and, it, and, it, and it cuts both ways. Right. How are you going to trade someone like that? If you want to trade them, no, you but can't. if you keep it on your team, what's he going to give you? Right, Ugh. he's just going to drag you down. Yeah, who knows? Right, Kyle, for real. Yeah, I mean, a, a a a prospect like that that's supposed to be ranked down highly, you want, yeah, yeah. That's not that's not good. I don't know. Maybe, See, that's very uh, very optimistic of you saying that. <laughs> very optimistic. Yeah, but yeah, but what do what do batters? Work on okay. I can understand maybe defense, but what do you? You're 170 batting 170. Well, he's not hit for contact, that's for sure. And he's striking out a lot. I mean, I can understand a pitcher if a pitcher say working on a new pitch and he's giving up a bunch of contact or whatever. Oh, okay, yeah, I get that. But yeah. you were having yeah. some success. You were having success down in Sacramento. You had a little bit of success at the MLB level. So you should be going up, right? Right. No, well, yeah, this is scary because, yeah, exactly. He's down at least a, a, a two or three notches in competition, right? That's what the theory is. Uh, it's just uh, we still got Joy Bart. What are we going to do with that? I mean, it uh, might be a trade piece. But can, what is this trade? What did what is this trade capital at that point? Uh, who knows? Can you rehab a catcher like that after this many years? Uh, I don't know. It's it's looking, it's not looking well. Let's just say that. Man, one seventy is just 
Oh, what is this hard? They showed it. Hold on, let me find out. Let me let me see if I can find it. I'll pull it up. All right, what we got? I know who it was. Oh man, looking at the pictures of the movie War Games, that reminds me of that old that old video game Missile Command. Remember that one? Missile Commander, yes, that was that awesome. Was, that was man. There were so many different variations of that afterwards. Damn it, do I still have it? Please tell me I did a like on it. If I didn't, then I'm it's gonna be um, all right, right on. Damn it. I didn't like it. Right on, Matthew. Appreciate it, man. Son of a bitch. I can't remember what that guy's Twitter was. Hold on, I know where to hold on one Good second. Old. Battle Twitter. Oh, he switched devices. Hold on one second. I'll be able to get it. Hold on one second. Are you good? Nothing new in the Middle East from what I can see right now. Hold on a second. Let me uh, scroll out. Oh, yeah. Senior said you sent it to us. Probably one of those earlier messages. Deal could be announced soon as today by Cutter for release of hostages, 50 hostages, Palestinian prisoners from Israel. Israel's not going to give them those hostages. I think this ceasefire is a bunch of BS. That's way too much to give up, I, I would think, from an Israeli standpoint. They want to stop Israeli surveillance drones over northern Gaza. That's not going to happen either. This, this freaking ceasefire is a bunch of bullshit. Pardon the French, dudes. It ain't going to happen. Give me a whatever. Somebody yanking somebody's chain. Who else is reporting on this crap? All right, yeah. I did send it to you guys. That's what I'm looking for. I just can't remember what his damn Twitter handle. I had to go look on my phone. Did you see what they're asking for in this uh, brokering deal for the ceasefire? Yeah, I talked about it a little bit. Well, they're asking for a little bit more on that. They're asking for no drone cover from the Australian. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The three to one ratio in, in prisoner. No, man, I don't. It's whatever, man. No, they don't want a ceasefire. That's what, that, that, in other words, you're saying, I don't want a ceasefire. <clears throat> Let's see. They, they don't have the hard hit rate, but whew. 59 plate appearances, batting 170, 339. He's walking, but he ain't slugging. 255. Look at that line, dude. 31 K rate, a 20% walk rate. So he's taking walks, but one home run. Started nine games at shortstop, three at second base. Yeah, you know, he's got a 31% K rate. Kyle Schwarber, but he actually smacks home runs. <laughs> yeah, his, yeah. That, that's forgivable. So that's, I I don't know what that means. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I, you know, I, as a, you know, if the Giants weren't so lowly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wouldn't worry so much. You know, hey, well, okay, give that guy some time. But I we think the Giants need to lean on this guy. They right, think they we, need <clears throat> We need to lean on our new on our younger players, and obviously that doesn't seem to be the case at this point in time. No, it does. Guys don't seem to be ready, man. I mean, Kyle Harrison, even at the end of the season, he started looking a little weird. Yeah, he wasn't looking the same, and it could be maybe his workload was catching up with him because he was pitching a Probably. lot. Probably, yeah. They were they were really babying him in AAA, really babied his ass. I don't know. I didn't quite understand that either, but. Yeah, you're only going to throw 40 pitches today. Yeah, because that's what he's gonna, that's what he's going to do at a starting pitcher in MLB, right? He's only going to throw 40 pitches. Yeah, cool. it makes no sense. Right on. You're going to call him up, and you wonder why he's gassed. Exactly. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, there you go. 15 minutes ago. 
What we Hold got? On. It had been a last long. <laughs> oh, brother, dude. First yep. rocket launches from Gaza Strip. <laughs> it's the announcement of the ceasefire and hostage deal. <laughs> there you go. Yep, that's that was some great ABS on there. Yeah, part, that man. worked. That worked. You knew that was going to happen. Ooh, you knew that was going to happen. I wonder are they attack are they attacking right now? Hold on a second. This might be interesting. Goodness gracious. This might be interesting, Gaza. Let's see if they're attacking right now. Oh, oh, they are nice and smoky. Yeah, <laughs> I knew that was a bunch of BS. Yeah, as soon as they announced it, I was like, "It ain't gonna." Oh, work. you can hear booms and everything. Yeah, they, they, oh man, that's really going off now. Oh, you got the. Oh yeah, it's um, it's getting they're getting lit up. Both sides are going after each other. Well, there you go. So so much for the uh so much for the damn oh yeah look at that it's on fire right now yeah they're you can hear it they're getting right back at each other again because uh Sir Rot, that's where the rockets were launched through. yeah that which is where the boom. cameras are same as it ever yeah. was yeah exactly no there's a yeah the ceasefire was in place already not no more. It's probably it's probably back off there. I mean, we're looking at the. Uh, let me bring this up. I gotta get get here in a few. I'm gonna shut it down here in a few minutes. Gotcha. But I'll put this out here. There you go. If you guys go to that link that shows you what's currently uh, the live feed from Israel looking into Gaza. And there's booms and smoke going on everywhere. So, yeah. Ceasefire. So what happened was, I guess, uh, Hamas launched more rockets into Israel only about 15 minutes ago. They don't hey, want it might have been a little bit longer than that, but that's when it was reported. So These people don't want any peace. Ooh. Hey, you know what? Before yeah. we go. What is that? You hear that? What was it? Hold on. Someone clapping wood together or something? Like, Ooh. It almost sounds like an embitter. One of our um, big old radios. They make that weird sound. No, I hear. It's not the time to be nailing any fence there, homie. <laughs> this is crazy, man. I get a rocket up the butt. <laughs> I said it too. I said it in the chat. We'll see how long that lasts. Or not in the chat, in a, our phone discussion. You know, just thinking about Thanksgiving for a second here. And uh, being a military channel and whatnot. Thanksgiving in the Army is pretty damn good. Yeah, they usually do it pretty good for the for the troopers. Yeah. Now the defect was always. Yeah, defect always nice. did it up. Yep, exactly. Got your commanders out there wearing a uniform. Yeah, exactly. Cars. Yep. You got all the, the higher ups, the group commanders, wing commander. They're out there serving serving up the food for the guys. Yeah, it's pretty good. Full on spread, man. Yeah, I saw that, Aaron. I heard it on the radio. Deion Sanders. Are you serious? Rush me. He's go, yeah, he did. Is he just trying to be phony? I don't know, but it sounded like he was serious. But he, maybe he was deadpan and I don't know. Good God. <laughs> That's not. I know. Mm. Oh, okay, I was crazy. Yeah, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna go there. Yeah, I don't, we don't, we don't, but I'll see about that. And then us here on a Tuesday evening talked about some Cold War stuff, specifically the Cuban Missile Crisis. That was kind of fun. I enjoyed that one. That was cool, man. We got yeah. to loose on you a little bit more. That'd be cool. Yeah, that was absolutely. Yeah, I like his insight. He did a fantastic job. I liked it. Uh, he knew his stuff too. Came in talking about the 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 Jupiter missiles in Turkey and Israel or in Italy. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Granted, those missiles weren't exactly 
you know, you just it took out because they're a liquid fuel. So they would have they would take they, hours. They were, it wasn't like outdated. we could still you couldn't sneak attack the Soviets with that missile. They they were outdated and whatnot. They didn't yeah. Really, yeah, it wasn't but too. Big then again, it. with the type of warhead, you don't really have to be that, that accurate. You don't have to be outdated for one of them. <laughs> nuke. A nuke is a damn nuke, by the way, man. <laughs> yep. And uh, so, yeah, we nuke. talked about that. It uh, looks like the ceasefire has come to an end in Gaza from the way it looks and from the reporting. So, yeehaw. Uh, the next show we'll have, not sure. Uh, maybe not till after the weekend because we got Thanksgiving weekend coming up, guys. Uh, we may be on NorCal Sports Network maybe sometime on the weekend. I'm not sure. Talk some talk some sports. But uh, I want to wish you guys all a happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. It's time with your family. Enjoy some good food. You know, watch Peanuts. That's always fun to watch. Trains, planes, and automobiles. Yeah. Yep. Start getting ready for Christmas time. It's always like the precursor to, to Christmas time. So, Oh, as soon as... You know what's gonna happen on Friday, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, and then good all, old all the damn Christmas commercials and everything. Yeah, exactly. Good. We should be getting the twenty four seven Christmas music on the radio soon. I think Mix ninety six in Sacramento they have the twenty four seven Christmas music. I think they start on on uh, Thanksgiving, if I'm not mistaken. It's, but it's again, thanks for Washington. joining, Will. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. Want to thank Glos for joining as well. Like we said, great insight. Had a fun discussion. We'll have to do. I'll have to put out another uh, another poll. <laughs> Something yeah, that that's actually a, that's a actually good, makes uh, people think a little bit because it looked like people just went. We'll, we'll just do Cuban missile crisis. <laughs> uh, I mm-hmm. know MF talked about wanting to do nine eleven. Well, we probably could get into that. That would be we interesting. Could do that. Well, yeah, he. One of the reasons why he wanted to get into it because he was uh, he was very young when it happened compared to us. Yeah, I guess we could get into that. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. He had a he had a question for us like, how do we react to it and how do we experience? Oh, okay. You know what? Maybe we'll just do that next time. Maybe we'll just do some nine eleven stuff. Hey, thanks, Matt. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, Matt. Thanks for coming in. Uh, But until next time, guys. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace. See ya. Thank you.